Okay, TLC, the last pay-per-view of the year. Was it anywhere near as good as NXT, our evolution, or revolution? No, so we'll just stop that right there. <clears throat> the Dusts versus the New Day. This time it was the version of Kofi and Big E. Nice match, good back and forth. I like the I like the f the flow of the match. You know, you had your your powerhouse and your fast guy, and your powerhouse, and your fast guy. They matched up nicely. New Day, of course, got the victory using the they call it midnight greeting or midnight ending. It's the the big ending with the assist from from Kofi. It looked great until they showed one angle, and you could see that there's a good amount of space between. Cody's body and Kofi. But beyond that, nice match, worked well, good amount of tag team communication. I liked Xavier on the outside kind of barking at the uh, at, at, at Gold Dust. I liked it, you know, it worked well for their storyline. So what becomes your first proper match? Ziggler Harper. Ladder match. Great match. Freaking brutal. Harper had blood. It looks like Ziggler got his head busted open. He had blood. They didn't do one of those like, oh, I got to stop the match because of, you know, gaming rules. But they had people that were with gloves trying to, you know, like, check them in between big spots. Lots of good spots. Lots of big spots. Brutal. Great way to start the pay-per-view. Ziggler wins. Crowd's going nuts. Great way to start the match, start the pay-per-view. Miz down Miz Usos. Usos win by DQ. What made the match work was Miz Dow. Watching Miz Dow sell like a double team super suplex is great. Match was kind of meh. Stairs match. Rowan and Big Show. Slow, brutal, methodical. The spot where Rowan is like setting up the larger sections of the bottom, the bottom portion of the stairs in like this weird geometric shape. I was like, so what are they going to do? Show Spears and through. Spears and through three of the bottom section of the stairs. And of course they showed the top sections are like 85 pounds, bottom section is like 190 pounds. Whether that's true or not, eh. It worked, it worked well. I thought it was interesting to do something like that. Show got the victory. Brutal match. Slow match. It worked It worked well to show the brutality that two big slow guys can have when you give them a weapon. We followed that up then with the tables match of John Cena and Rollins. I've gotten to the point now where I don't think... A match with John Cena, that's not a tag match, gets me invested at all. John Cena fought off Rollins and J&J Security. He did put Seth Rollins through a table, but there was a ref bump. So the ref didn't see it. Okay. They then do a spot where they both fell off the apron through tables. One ref said John Cena won. One ref said Seth Rollins won. Another ref said, you know what, screw it, we don't know, continue the match. And then Big Show came down because... A, a th mini authority? But then, Roman Reigns re-debuted. Which was mildly spoiled because we got to see him accept the Slammy for Superstar of the Year. So he said he was coming back, and most of the going to come back, and he came back. And he attacked Seth Rollins, and he put the Big Show through a table, therefore allowing John Cena to put Seth Rollins through a table. Which more or less means at the Royal Rumble, we're going to see John Cena, Lesnar, three... Knowing that John Cena got destroyed the first time, and then John Cena... Took Sensu beans so at a power level he never felt before, and then attacked Brock Lesnar and could have defeated Brock Lesnar. And then we're gonna see a third match. It's gonna make me kind of go, "Well, do I go to the bathroom now or wait for a Divas match?" Which is sad because I 
freaking love women's wrestling, but I don't get that on the E. I get divas instead. Speaking of which, AJ and Nikki, they were given more time, so the match was actually somewhat decent. I'm saying so many, the last match was horrible. The matches they've had on Raw and SmackDown have been less than time. This one was pretty decent. You know, you had Nikki doing the occasional power moves and AJ trying to make the match actually coherent and make sense. Brie kind of got involved, which then led to Nikki then spraying something in AJ's face at a rag attack. And I was like, oh, okay. So then you sprayed something. Alright, well, we already had one heel get like the DQ finish to hold on to their belts, I guess, you know, random spray crap on someone's face, finisher, alright, whatever. Swagger took on Rusev in a match that I could have swore we saw at SummerSlam, and ended just like, it was either SummerSlam or Great American Bash, or one of the times that those two fought and Swagger passed out. It was that. Decent match, but since we've already seen them at like three pay-per-views, I, I still think how they should have ended this match. Swagger should have relentlessly picked the ankle, which he did. Which made sense from a storyline perspective. He should have relentlessly picked the ankle. He should have gotten pissed at the point that he had the ankle lock in. If Rusev get to the bottom rope, have Swagger refuse to let the ankle go. He said he was going to break his ankle. Have the ref give the five count. Have Swagger not break it. Or if Swagger even, you know, like push the ref and go back to hold up the ankle again. Have Swagger lose by DQ. But then you have, you know, Rusev come out for like the rest of the week with like a soft cast on. Like, you know, he's got a mildly broken ankle. Sell that up. Build that up. You have Rusev not be able to wrestle for a couple of weeks, but have him still show up. Or just have Lana show up and be like, you know, Rusev is, a, Rusev is, is injured, you know, they wouldn't let him fly to the arena. Really push that swagger out, pissed to the point that he injured somebody, and he could have won the match, but his rage overtook him. That's a revenge angle. It allows Rusev to get some time, and then when he comes back at the Royal Rumble, you know, he then gets to annihilate everybody that he wants to. And it makes sense, and it's strong, and it's impactful. And then when I have him face Swagger again, then you have him beat the holy crap out of Swagger, like in a partial squash match. So you have, you took out my manager, I break your ankle, the next time they have a match, a one-on-one -on -one match, you have Rusev just be absolutely dominant. Like you, like I broke his leg, you broke my ankle. I break you. I make you humble. But they decided not to do that. Roman Reigns cut a promo where he made a mistake about the word declare, and he fumbled his way through talking about how he's going to be dominant or impactful at Royal Rumble. I, I think they need to go back to talking with Roman Reigns, you know, so to make an impact. First part we talked about, you know, I attacked, you know, I speared Big Show through a table, I punched the Rollins in the mouth, that's making an impact. Then his very next thing he should have said something along the lines of, you know, just spitballing here, and that's why I mentioned the Royal Rumble as number one. I'm going to make an even bigger impact. Or, I'm making a bigger impact the Royal Rumble. I'm number one. Believe that. And then just walk away. you got to make a huge impact to say that you're number one. That's how, that's how much of a badass you are. I'll take it the number one spot and I'm going to go from one to thirty and main event WrestleMania. No. That's not what they have to do. It's like, if you're not good at cutting a promo, make the promo short, sweet, to the point. Right back, Kane. Chairs match. Slow. Brutal. 
it is hard because you're trying to follow up like a stairs match where your weapon is similar to that of a chair. The chairs match they actually did put a chair on the top of the turnbuckle and did a snake eyes into it. During the stairs match, they wedged the top part of the stair in between the second and third rope in the corner. And I was like, show, do a snake eyes onto the stair and the attached to the ring, attached to the, the turnbuckle. It would look sick. No, they did a snake eyes the the chairs match. Decent match, again, slow, brooding, impactful. I do feel like we've seen Kane have a lot of matches with Ryback, well, like Ryback, that just didn't feel like a pay-per-view match. Ryback got the pinfall, one, two, three. So that means your main event, Ambrose, Wyatt. I brought because our very first pay-per-view match of the year was Wyatt and Bryant. So how was this match? They should have called it tables, ladders, chairs, and kendo sticks. Good level of brutality to it. They did a good job when it came to using the, all the weapons involved. You know, a couple of nice ladder spots. On the outside of the ring, Dean had Wyatt on a table. Did a ladder elbow drop, put him through a table. Found another table. Crawled up, hit another elbow off a ladder. Couldn't quite. He then goes to the so Spanish announce table, tells them to leave, please. Gets a bigger ladder, and people are beating the boo because there's an even bigger ladder. To which he looks at the crowd and goes, I can't carry that one. Brilliant. Those are the moments that are great. When he hears, he grabs one ladder that's huge. One next one is bigger. And they're like, boo. And he goes, I can't carry that one. So this is the heaviest ladder I can carry. And you see him struggling to get down to the ring with it. Great. He then puts Wyatt through a third table using an elbow drop. Alright. They have some good nuances here and there. And they're both down. Tables. This is the third table has been destroyed. Ambrose looks at Wyatt and kisses him on the head. Like what Wyatt does before his sister Abigail. And then, they, then you see like a small headbutt from Wyatt. You know, a little bit of brawling while they're trying to crawl back into the ring. Those are the little things, you know, where it's a brutal match, but they get these little nuances that made it a pretty decent match. Now we're getting to the ending. Ambrose had brought uh, a television into the ring because it was there. He wants to hit Wyatt with a television. Can't. The cords are too short. He rips it even more. The TV then kind of explodes in his face, showering his face with sparks. Wyatt gets up Sister Abigail, one, two, three. Good match. The ending... Had we not had Diva's match that ended with, you know, some sort of, like, you know, optic, optic disruption and then uh, a finisher... Or had he had taken like the sh like the shower of sparks into the face, and then why did it sister Abigail into the television that was laying on the floor, that was laying outside the ring? Yeah, you know, they could have done a spot like that. It just needed that one little like boom. It needed just that little hint of more damage to it to have really push that match. And that was a it was a good solid match, but that ending was just kind of meh. All in all, this was a decent pay-per-view. It felt a lot like freaking Super Raw. I almost do wish they would go back to Raw being its own show, SmackDown being its own show. And then do split pay-per-views. That then gives you eight weeks to build a match. Currently, you've got eight shows, but let's be honest, they're really not building any of these matches until we get, like, two weeks out. So they're already kind of on the mountain. They have to build matches in half. And if you saw the last pay-per-view, Sho was a defector on his team, but he fought someone from Cena's team. He had an authority guy fight someone from Cena's team. An authority guy from some fight someone from Cena's team. I mean, you pretty much saw the exact same guys in the exact same matches. And they've all had one-on-one -on -one matches. 
for the majority of the whole last month. So they had the same match, they just threw in a, a gimmick weapon to it. 